Hi, hi. Uh, so we are Joe and Sam from the Savvy School, and every Friday we go live here in the Facebook group for a live Friday where we get to answer all of your questions. So what have we got today, Sam? Today, now we see this question pop up quite a bit actually, so which is the reason we've chosen it. Today's question is, how do you set up a Zoom meeting on behalf of a client? Because mm. it can be tricky. I don't know what you're doing right it definitely can and we've had um virtual assistants come to us like oh what do i do my client tried to go into the meeting and then they weren't the host and i was the host and then they couldn't have the meeting and like it just actually really reflects badly on the va if they haven't set up the meeting right and it causes a whole lot of frustration um so we i have a bit of a simple solution for how to manage this and this is how um, I use Zoom with my team, and if we have client meetings or anything like that, they always use this sort of system so that we can get around the like issues with the host. So often, virtual assistants will need to book their um, meetings for client uh, for their clients on behalf of the client for them to meet with people that they need to meet with, and that's mm -hmm. pretty pretty standard if you're a, like a personal assistant, virtual assistant, a pretty standard type of request that you might get. Um, and so many millions of people are now using Zoom that it's sort of become the go-to tool to use for meetings, um, and most people now have Zoom. Um, yes, there's Teams, and there's also Google Hangouts and other things that you might use, um, Skype, but I think the confusion comes with Zoom because there are lots of different meeting links and you have to be a host to be able to get in. There's lots of different settings that you can use um, and there's the free version and the pro version so it can get a little confusing um, but amazing tool uh, for actually running the meetings once you've got it under control. So the system that we suggest is that for every Zoom user there is a personal meeting room link. And it comes with a password. Um, and if you can get that personal meeting room link from your client, or they can give you their Zoom login and you can go in and you can get that personal meeting room um, link, that is the one that you just want to keep using over and over. So anytime that you create a meeting, I would not recommend using the button that you can get in Outlook for like creating a Zoom meeting. I would just schedule a meeting just like you normally would in Outlook and then copy and paste that link and the password directly into that meeting request that you then send um, on behalf of your client. And what that means is that that meeting link is always connected to them. They're always going to be the host of that and they can just keep using that over and over. Um, and when they open up if they download the desktop type version of Zoom, when they open that up, it is just a one click button for them to create new meeting or start meeting or something like that it's called. So they're just clicking that same button every time it pops up and it opens their personal meeting room. It's just so much easier. Often yeah. what we see virtual assistants doing is using that button um, in the Outlook. And then if you're like, you've got permissions to use your client's Outlook and like you're in your Outlook um, online and you go to create the meeting, then it's creating a meeting that's your link, not their link, and that's where the confusion comes in. So if you just create and schedule meetings just like you normally would and paste in that link, they have their link, you have your own personal meeting link, and so you would use that when you have meetings, you would use theirs when they have to have that meeting. Um, and I always have the waiting room turned on. So in the settings, I turn on the waiting room because uh, when, you, when you're using that same meeting room, it means that you might have the next meeting coming in. Uh, you know, you might be running over and then the next one needs to start. So what that means yeah. is it just holds that next person in the waiting room. Your client can finish up their meeting and then they can let the ne next person in from that waiting room. So that's how I would suggest you have it set up. Um, so yeah, that personal meeting room, it's called, that's the link that you want to be using. And it just saves a whole lot of heartache, doesn't it, Sam? It does. So simple, so easy. That's it yep. in a nutshell. Yeah. So thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, if anyone is wanting to uh, learn more, get Sam and I as your personal coaches, we have an exclusive members club. 
uh, where we teach women just like you how to create an in-demand virtual assistant business or if you've already got one and you're wanting to now level that up and really grow that, then mm. we have a whole series of steps in our growth stage over in the Members Club um, that you get access to. Uh, and if you join, you get instant access to everything also. It's not like we drip feed or anything like that. Everything is available as soon as you come in. And it's just a simple monthly membership at 67 New Zealand dollars a month. It's an absolute bargain, isn't it, Sam? <laughs> Oh, it is. And we'd love to see you join us. We've got an amazing group of women from all over the world and uh, and room for more. So come and join us and be part of the, the Savvy School family. Nice. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Have a great weekend. Bye, guys. <laughs>